Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Danielle M. Kali. I'm a senior director at Nexus Community Partners, and I'm a part of the Open Road Fund team. I've been at Nexus for 10 years, and I'm going to pass it on to um, my colleagues and team members to introduce themselves to. Peace, y'all. My name is Duaba. I am the grants manager for the Open Road Fund. Been with Nexus for a year, a year and a couple nickels, a couple dimes. Um, happy to be here with y'all. Yeah, thank you for taking time this afternoon to come in, come and join us and hear about the fund. All right, so who's going next? Um, good afternoon. It's afternoon, right? Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Lavasha. Uh, I go by she, her pronouns. I am the program manager for the Open Road Fund. I've been with Nexus um, two years, about two years. Welcome. Hello, everybody. I am Taiwana Shambly. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I'm the program associate for the Open Road Fund. I've been here for about a year as well. Me and Duwaba came on together. Um, and it's dope to be in community with y'all. Hi. So a couple of logistical things. Um, the closed captioning should be enabled. So if anyone needs to um, be able to use closed captioning, um, that should be accessible for you all. Uh, also, we do have the chat going. We see a lot of folks in the chat. Thank you for keeping it lively. Um, and we also have the Q&A. So if you have a particular question um, as we're going through our presentation uh, this afternoon, please put that in the Q&A function and then we'll make sure that um, we make note of it, pay attention to it and answer everybody's questions um, as much as we are um, able to, to do that. Um, we've been working, <clears throat> this team has been working on the Open Road Fund for the last um, 18 months, um, and we are really, really excited um, to be here with you all now to have the application um, process open and to be able to share some more information about the application with all of you today and a little bit about the journey of how we got here. Um, so as many of you may already know, um, the Open Road Fund um, is a, a fund for Black community members in North Dakota, South Dakota, and Minnesota. The origin of this fund came from the Bush Foundation. Um, in 2021, the Bush Foundation released $100 million to create two separate um, community trust funds, one for Black folks in this region and another for Native and Indigenous folks in this region as well. Um, Nexus went through a process um, and expressed our interest. We worked with our Black staff at Nexus Community Partners to come up with a, um, a proposal about how we wanted to steward these funds. And we were chosen by the Bush Foundation and community members to become the, the stewards of this fund. Throughout the process over the last year, we've been doing community engagement and evaluation and research work, doing things and, and established um, an advisory, advisory committee. Um, and also I've been working with different partners throughout the, the past year. Um, you've met our team. So this is the team that's been working mostly um, on, on, the, on the Open Road Fund. Um, also, we have other folks at our organization, our Black Staff Assembly that has been contributing a lot of work and labor to the success of the fund as well. Um, I will pass this on to uh, Lavasha. Alrighty, um, so this is our 12 member advisory board, um, advisory committee, um, very dynamic group, very diverse group, um, and they represent the funds region of Minnesota, North Dakota, and South Dakota. And so we have a very diverse group because we have people who are farmers, entrepreneurs, artists, youth workers, um, healer, like the list goes on as far as the experience that they bring. Um, so I'll go over a little bit of the process for bringing in the advisory committee. Um, I think early on, we knew that we wanted to have 
community help and really be engaged in the community. We didn't want to be as staff, the only ones at the table making the decision. And so we really wanted to make sure that we reached out to the community to get their feedback as well on what this whole process and program and grant would look like. So last August, we did a call out for applications um, for the advisory committee. So people had to submit applications. We went through our interview process. And then from there, we chosen the 12 advisory com member, uh, committee members that you all see here today. Um, and so some of the work that they've been helping us cultivate since the very beginning, um, before we even announced the whole launch and things like that, um, we've worked with Research and Action, where we are working with them continuously, um, to create the broad community survey. And that was really to get feedback on, you know, what does wealth look like? Um, what are the wealth building themes? Um, and ultimately help us shape the five wealth building themes, as well as our um, definition of what Black wealth is, which you'll see in a little bit here. So the advisory committee had a really important role in helping us to shape what that definition looks like. They've also helped us with the application criteria, um, renaming the fund. So initially when it came to us, we didn't have a name. We were calling it Community Trust Fund or Black Community Trust Fund. And they helped us to um, rename it to Open Roll Fund, which you see today. Um, and then in addition, they've also just are, serve as our checks and balance, you know, um, to make sure that we're doing the work that we say we're gonna do, making sure that we're accountable to community, um, that were equitable and really lending their expertise and perspectives um, along the way. So that's my piece. And uh, speaking of, of the Black wealth definition, um, you know, and what we believe. I'm gonna take a moment to just read what's on the screen for you all, because there's power in putting the language into the space. Um, so what we believe, we believe that paths lead to our destiny. And when faced with barriers, we call upon our ancestors to guide us on the open road to liberation. In honor of their resiliency and communal spirit, the Open Road Fund aims to redistribute resources to present day descendants of the Atlantic slave trade in an effort to build Black wealth within our communities. Next slide. What is Black wealth? Black wealth for us is, is about liberation and freedom from dependency and from a culture that has reproduced anti-Blackness and robbed Black people of our creativity. Attaining Black wealth is about restoring what has been stolen. It's about rebuilding our communities and reclaiming our right to self-determination. And by reclaiming our ancestral birthright, we seek restoration as we heal from the loss and denial of ancestral knowledge, of familial connections, and our most sacred traditions rooted in family, love, and community. Ancestral restoration enables us to take control of our minds, our bodies, and our soul. By reclaiming our sovereign rights to take control over our lives and to take control of what we produce, build, or invent, we seek the freedom to reclaim the land, build new institutions, resource those institutions, and gain new tools and knowledge that can enrich the next generation and creatively decide what quality of life we deserve and what services we need. Black wealth is about liberation, restoration, freedom, and creativity to reclaim our mind, body, and soul, to heal from ancestral disruption and present day displacement. Black wealth is about 
gaining our right to self-determination through ownership of what we produce, build, or invent for our communities and community through our creativity and excellence. Um, and a quick shout out to our partner, Research and Action, um, who has been leading you know, our community evaluation and research work to, to make sure this definition was you know, was not made in a vacuum. It was made with and in solidarity with our communities. Right, might be my turn. Sorry, I was uh. I got caught up in the chat <laughs> answering questions. So let's see. Um, so for this next section of our info session, um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the specifics, but I'm also going to do a walkthrough of the application. So for anybody who has um, specific questions or you're curious about what the application looks like, uh, stick around for that. If you can't, I just wanna share again that we are recording this session. We're going to upload it to our website so that you can review it on your own time if now isn't a good time for you. Um, so if you got to leave for whatever reason, don't worry. We got you. Just keep your eyes on the website. Um, so let's talk about eligibility. So in order to apply for the Open Road Fund, you need to meet the following criteria. You need to be age 14 and up. You need to be a resident of Minnesota, North Dakota, or South Dakota. And I'll also add that you need to have a plan that will take place within Minnesota, North Dakota, or South Dakota. And you primarily use the wealth that you generate within that region. And then finally, this fund is for Black folks who are descendants of the um, Atlantic slave trade, also known as the Middle Passage also known as the Ma'afa to some of us. And that includes Black folks in the Caribbean, North America, where we are, Central America, South America, and also descendants of formerly enslaved people who repatriated to Africa. So that would include Sierra Leone, Liberia, and other locations. So let's go on to the next slide. Um, a common question that we got as we started um, opening up the fund and even before was, do people have to prove, do, you, do, do, like, do I have to prove that I'm actually descendant of someone who is enslaved? And our answer to that question has always been no. Like, how could you? It's, it's, very, it's very rare that any of us in this experience um, could prove that with any written documentation. And that's not what we're looking for. So no, you don't have to prove your lineage to us, but when you do apply, what we are looking for you to share is how are you connected to this experience? How are you connected to communities of Black folks who are descendants of enslaved Africans? Um, how do you participate? Like tell us in as much detail as you want to share about that. What we're actually gonna be doing um, is prioritizing protecting the funds. So when you apply and if you're selected for an award, we will have to verify your identity just as part of due diligence. Um, we're going to use a background check tool. Um, that tool may or may not provide information that verifies um, your lineage. But what's really important to us is that if there's anyone who, for whatever reason, um, has indicated to us that they are not actually eligible for the fund and they've applied anyway, we will prioritize and focus our energy on investigating those kinds of situations. Um, so that's a little bit about the ancestry question. And if y'all have more questions about that, um, put it into the Q&A chat and we'll talk about it during Q&A if we have time. So let's keep going. So I think it's also important to talk about the criteria that we're looking for. So the Open Road Fund is uh, an award that can be used 
in a very, very broad way. Like we in no way are going to restrict or tell you what to do or how you should use your funds. We will tell you if you're using your funds in a way that is, <laughs> is not in alignment and we may have to ask you to change your plan. But we have some broad, broad categories that we're looking for, we're expecting people to use their funds for. And when you apply, you're going to be asked to select what is the main area of focus that best describes your plan for building wealth. We know that folks' plans are going to be um, expensive. They're going to tap on a lot of different aspects of wealth. But we just want you to let us know, like, what is the core of your plan? So the five areas that we've identified are housing or housing stability. Um, that was kind of self-explanatory. Um, education. So maybe you want to go back to school. You want to get some kind of certification or some kind of license. Anything that by learning it, it will help you to increase your income and your capacity to build wealth. Um, you may want to pursue financial well-being. So that can include things like um, creating investment accounts, retirement accounts, saving money um, for your children to go to school, paying down debts, things like that. Health and healing is a broad category that could include anything from taking a sabbatical, like a year off from work, or it could include paying for a medical procedure. It could include taking a wellness trip. It could include um, buying a trip for your family to go and visit the African continent so you can learn more about your roots. It's a very broad and expensive category, but it pertains to things that you would do um, to increase your wellness, your physical, physical, cultural, spiritual wellness. And then we have ownership and economic justice. And that is for our entrepreneurs, our business owners, our people who are interested in starting up a business or paying down debts incurred by starting up a business, folks who want to start cooperatives, um, also a very broad category. It could also include folks who want to own land, um, or purchase equipment to um, increase the capacity of a business that you might have. So those are the broad categories. Um, when you apply for the Open Roads Fund, we do not restrict or look over your shoulder to make sure that um, your plan is carried out to a T. We know that things have to be adaptable, um, but these are the broad categories. In terms of applications, we can only accept applications submitted online. We are going to work towards a situation in the future where that's not, not the only case. Um, but right now, we're a team of four people. We only have capacity to receive applications online. Um, and if you are not able to get access, um, you know, Soon we're going to have a list of resources and access sites where you can find a place um, to get access to the application. Um, and we'll also be posting that information on our website. But for right now, I want to share with y'all the application so you can actually see what it's like to go through it. So let me share my screen in a second. And we'll get started. Oh, all right. So can everybody see my screen? Cool. All right. So this is the application and I can actually show you from our website, type in nexuscp.org, open road fund. This is where you'll land on the website. And you can choose to get a text only application or you can get an ASL um, interpreted and captioned application if that's something that you need to complete the application. And that is going to take you here. So starting out, you're gonna have to fill out an eligibility section to make sure that you actually qualify for the application. So I'm just gonna fill out a a fake one. I don't want y'all to have my personal information and all that just yet. I'm in Minnesota. I'll also say here in the eligibility section, um, 
yes, I think so. I'm not sure. Like we know that for some folks, certainty about our origins is not is not something that's readily available. Um, so just be honest about where you're at with um, the knowledge about your roots, and we're gonna meet you where you're at. So you confirm all that stuff, and if you're eligible, you get to go into the rest of the application. So there's a couple pages of disclaimers. Um, I'm gonna read a couple of these because I think they're important. The first thing that I want to share is the application closes on July 28th at 1159 Central Standard Time. Um, on average, people who have just like kind of blazed through the application, it's taking them about two hours, two hours, 30 minutes. Um, we say maybe three to five hours is what it would take you if you want to do it in one sitting. But what we really recommend is that you take your time and you move through it slow, um, especially if you want to apply as a group. The other thing that I'll say is that when you write your answers, you don't need to write a whole novel. You don't need to write a whole business plan. Um, but what we are looking for are clear answers that let us know three things. And that's all in point five right here, which I'm gonna highlight. So the first is, tell us how you're gonna use the $50,000 if you're awarded to improve your quality of life for you, your family, or your community. That's probably something that you wanna answer in like more than one sentence. <laughs> and I've, we've gotten a few one sentence answers, but we need a little bit of detail about how you wanna, how you wanna improve your quality of life. We also want to know about how access to that money would empower you to continue or start a wealth building project. And if you have an idea for what you want to do, you can tell us about it. If you don't have an idea yet, but you just kind of got a notion about what you want to do, tell us that too. And then three, we want to know that your wealth building plan is ethical and aligned with our program values. And so any applications that don't meet those three criteria may not be approved for the registration process. So that means you won't move on to the random selection process where we draw folks' names for awards. Um, so, you know, tell us as much as you want us to know, um, but definitely tell us something. Give us enough to, to read through your application and get a sense of who you are and what you want to do. So you read through that disclaimer page. Confirm that you read and understood everything. Click next, it's gonna take you to one more um, informed consent page. This is where we talk about the selection process. So when you apply to the open road fund, because we expected to receive so many applications and also because we didn't want to start this process or run this, run this program on a spirit of competition, but instead center cooperation, what we have decided to do in, in, in conversation and guidance from community is have this be a random selection process. So what that means is you submit this first part of your application that gets your name into the running. If your application is eligible and qualified to proceed on to random selection, then what we're going to do is use a computer algorithm to pick 100 people from around Minnesota and the Dakotas to be awardees for the fund. And if you're selected for an award, you'll get access to a second part of the application where you'll be able to tell us about your wealth building plan and we'll be able to give you feedback on it. So where you all are at right now is in part one where we're checking applications for eligibility and if they're qualified um, to move on to the next round. If your application is qualified, then what we're gonna do is start the random selection process. We can't tell you about the algorithm. We can't tell you how it works. We can't do those things because we don't know how it works. <laughs> we just know that it does. Um, and any questions about that, we can't answer because that's like the secret sauce of the whole process. So we can't tell you about that. Um, the third part of the process is we're gonna evaluate your plan, give you feedback. Um, and then once your plan is approved, and we've also verified your identity, um, we'll send you the funds. And we wanna get all of that wrapped up by this by the end of this year. 
So on this page, we're basically telling you about the process. And after final selections, if you're an awardee, you will also be able to enter into a secondary opportunity to regrant a portion of your money or gift a portion of your money to another person who was awarded, whose project you really want to support and believe in. Um, more details about that as we get closer to it. But basically, if you are cool with being part of our random selection process, um, just tell us yes and hit the next page and you can move on. And if you're not cool with that, that's okay too. You can click no and um, it'll end the application process for you there. But if you are, click yes, we'll go on. We have this uh, pre-application warm-up exercise here for you to just kind of get you thinking and creative and relaxed before you start writing. Um, I'm gonna let y'all enjoy that on, on your own time once you start the application. And then we get here and then it becomes like every other grant application that you may or may not have applied for. <laughs> um, we need to know who you are. So your demographic info, I'm gonna just put, uh, I'm gonna just put Prince Riders Nelson, Prince at the revolution. Dot org. Please make sure to put the right email to y'all because this is where this is how you're going to get a confirmation that your application was actually um, submitted. Let us know what pronouns you want to use. Prince, of course, is known as the artist. Definitely making over two hundred thousand dollars because it's Prince. Um, and now I want to talk a little bit about the difference between applying as an individual or a group. All right, so. When you get to the bottom of this first part of the application, it's going to ask you how you want to apply. If you click individual, the application stays the same. You just go on all the way through all of the questions. But if you click group, one, if you're the first person applying as a member of your group, you become like the primary point of contact for your group. And so what that means is, is you're going to need to let us know a couple things. We need to know how many people are in your group. For the open road fund, a maximum of five people can apply as a group. So you can have up to four collaborators. For this example, I'm just gonna put two. Once you put in that number, it's gonna ask you to type in the name and the email of your collaborators. So since I'm adding two, I'm gonna click right here and add another collaborator. Um, you want to make sure that you put in the correct email for all of your collaborators, because that's how they're going to get invited into your application. So if you're thinking about applying as a group, um, you all need to figure out who's going to be the primary point of contact. And then the rest of the members of your group are going to need to wait until they get an email invitation to sign up on your application so everything gets connected together. We won't be able to connect your applications if you all apply separately, we'll just have to treat y'all as individuals. So just for the purpose of moving through this quickly, I'm gonna apply as an individual so I can show you the rest of the app, but it's gonna be the same for everybody. We're gonna ask you questions about ancestry. We're gonna talk a little bit about the Ma'afa, which is how we discuss um, the history of our ancestors enslavement here in the Americas. You're going to let us know where, um, due to the Ma'afa or due to the, the Middle Passage, your ancestors settled. So for some of us, that's North America. For some of us, that's Central America. Some of us come from multiple locations. So you can pick as many as apply to you. You can tell us more about your response. And then we want to know how you all are connected to this experience of the Middle Passage of African enslavement of the Ma'afa um, in your own words. So I'm just gonna put tests because we're going through this for learning and educational purposes. Um, we're gonna ask you to tell us about the black, we're gonna tell you about our definition of black wealth. And we also wanna know like, if there's anything that you wanna change about our definition of black wealth and how much you agree with it, feel free to be honest here. It's just gonna help us to learn from community and it's gonna help us to get to know you a little bit better. You can also choose to not. 
And here we're going to ask you to pick your wealth building project type. You can only pick one. It's the main focus of your wealth building project, even though we know that some folks plans for building wealth are going to include elements of all of these things. The way you should think about it is what is the primary means I'm going to use to build wealth for myself, my family or my community. So since it's Prince, you know, we got to go with economic power. That's what Prince was. That's one of the things that Prince was all about. And then the rest of this is uh, we have a we have a kind of a financial well-being section. Um, and this is where we want to get to know more about you and how you want to use the award to build wealth. And also, what have your experiences and obstacles to building wealth been? So I think I'm going to stop sharing the application here because I feel like there's going to be a lot of questions. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. The rest of this application is really simple. Um, we designed it to be simple. About 5,000 people have applied already. So, um, you know, let that encourage you. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a difficult application at all, but it is one that you need to be thoughtful in your answers and responses on. So if y'all are ready to get into the Q&A section, let's do it. There's several, several questions about, can we apply as an individual? and as a group? That's a very good question. The answer to that question is no. <laughs> you can only apply as an individual or as a group. Basically, the way you should think about it is, would, would it be fair if you could put your name into the hat twice? No, it wouldn't be fair, right? So that's why you can only apply once, either as an individual or as a member of a group. Someone else asked if they can download the application once they've completed it. Yeah, I'm glad somebody asked that. So let me share my screen again. Um, I prepared I prepare the application just for this occasion. So when you complete your application, right before you submit it, it's gonna ask you to review your response, confirm that everything is correct, and then you can submit it. So. You know, I put test answers in here. So we're not gonna pay attention to what I wrote, but instead, when you get to the bottom, you're gonna see this big purple confirm button. And you might be encouraged and excited or exhausted from writing all of these answers to click it as soon as you see it, but don't do that. Because if you want to save your application, what you're gonna wanna do is hit print this page. And when you hit print this page, it is going to let you save it as a PDF, or you can print it out if you have access to a printer. Um, I say save it as a PDF so you have a digital copy on your computer, and then you can print it out so that you have a paper copy for your records. You can also click this button, make a correction, and it'll open the application back up for you so you can change things, make corrections, stuff like that. The other thing that I want to point out is that you don't need to finish this whole application in one sitting. And you can also save your progress so that you can resume it later. If you just click on this little checkbox right here, you type in your email, you give yourself a password, you hit save, and then it'll send you an email so that you can log back into your application at a later time. So thank you, whoever asked that question. Hope that helps. There's another, there's a couple more group questions that are really good. Okay. Um, there's another one that says, will each person in the group need to apply separately? And what if a group member never, never submits their application? For sure, that's good questions. So yes, um, everybody in your group will need to apply separately. We need to make sure that everybody in your group is actually eligible. So that's something to also consider. Everybody has to be eligible for the fund. Um, we need to know a little bit about each member of your group. And there's some aspects of this application process where it's okay if you want to duplicate answers. Like you all need to be able to show that you're going to work on a consistent single wealth building project together. So if all of y'all are planning to start a business together, it's okay if you want to duplicate answers across everybody's application about what the business is going to be. What's also helpful for us to have 
is what is each member's unique contribution to the wealth building plan. So you're gonna wanna include um, a mix of uh, consistent answers across everybody. And also we wanna know like, what's your special abilities? What do you contribute to the X-Men, to the Justice League of your group? Um, are you RZA, are you Jizza? are you Method Man? Are you Red Man? Like who are you on this team? Um, and we'll go more into detail on that if, you're, if your group is actually selected for the wealth building plan. But for right now, just give us enough information to get to know everybody who's in your crew and give us enough information to know that you all are working towards the same vision. If somebody in your group does not apply, that will not disqualify your group. But what it will mean is that that person is disqualified. And so we, if your group is selected, we will only be able to give awards to the people who actually were able to apply. So we're gonna leave it up to y'all's discretion and leadership to keep your team organized. Um, and if you know that people have um, been slacking on getting their application response in, um, don't discourage them and don't punish them, like rally people to support that person. Because what this whole fund is about is cooperation amongst Black folks and us supporting one another, us lifting one another up. So don't leave your people behind if you know that you haven't gotten, somebody hasn't gotten their application in. There's another group app question. Um, are all applications from the group included in the random selection or is it only the lead person of the group? Um, and additionally to that, how much grant money is awarded to a group? So if you apply as a group, each person in your group is gonna get $50,000. And each person is gonna get that money sent to them directly. So it's not like the primary person for your group is gonna get all of the money and then have to distribute it to everybody. The other thing is that for actually let me let me hear let me hear the first part of the question again because I want to make sure that I answer it correctly. Please explain clearly the group applications. Are all applications from the group included in the random selection, or is it only the lead person of the group? Got you. It's the lead person of the group. So you might want to have the luckiest person. In you. I'm just kidding. It's the lead person in the group. Um, when on our side, we will know how many people are in the group. And we are going to um, award everybody in the group um, if it's selected. I can't tell you. I can't tell you more about that because, again, that's getting into proprietary secret sauce information, and we don't really want that out there like that. Yeah, folks are really into the algorithm questions. So, um, yeah. the algorithm for group and individual apps. Or do they go through separate algorithms? People are trying to figure out what's the what's the best chance of getting an award. The best chance of getting an award is to apply. <laughs> That's what I can say. <laughs> the best chance of getting an award is to apply. And if you are going to the Beyonce concert, or you going you going if you going to anybody's concert, tell them about the Open Road Fund. Tell them to donate an extra $100 million to the program so that we can make more awards per year. That's what I would say. So this, this, is, this is a question that we must answer with community organizing, not with speculation and us revealing our secret algorithm to you. So yeah, the only way to get more money out is to get more money in. The only way to win is to apply. <laughs> What else we got? We have a question around, um, it says, I think I read that if you receive benefits, public benefits, for example, um, social security insurance, you risk losing them if you apply, is that accurate? So the safe answer that we can give is we're not sure. And what we would advise is as, you, as you're applying, and if you're if you're eligible or if you're selected for an award to consult with the tax tax person, um, we're doing our best to make sure that the awards are not taxable. I'm gonna let Danielle speak to that if it's something that we can speak to. 
but we definitely want to encourage y'all to be prepared for the instance where it's not so if you're selected for an award you may need to be prepared to pay taxes if you are on public assistance or you have to pay out a portion of your wages you may need to be prepared for um the award to be hit with that too um and that's kind of the most we can say because this is something you got to handle on a case-by-case -case basis anything else you want to add to that I think Danielle might be typing something out in the chat for y'all too. Um, so with the with the tax um, piece, we are still working on the um, evaluation for individual income tax. Um, what we will say is either way, if any awardee has any kind of questions or concerns about the gift um, or the grant impacting their taxes, that they should really work with a tax advisor. We, we may share um, what some great resources are in community for um, getting tax help. Community Action often offers um, free tax um, support for folks in this whole region, I believe. And then there's another group, um, Prepare and Prosper, that does work, I think, in Minnesota, but they might expand. Um, there, was a, there were also some other questions about who could help people fill out applications and who could um, support people with disabilities. Um, I did put respond to one of those questions that um, to be able to kind of provide good direction for folks um, that are that have disabilities that are working on the application. Um, you could reach out to our email, our support email, which is ORF support at nexuscp.org. And we'll put that in the in the chat as well. Um, but also uh, most of the public libraries throughout the whole region um, will be able to offer some level of support for people that are struggling with the applications um, or need support in terms of accessing Wi-Fi or computers. Um, and then also in North Minneapolis, Emerge is um, working to offer support for their clients that are working there. And then um, people that may have any type of um, hearing a disability, um, Minnesota Deaf Muslim Association will assist anyone that needs help with their application as well. And we'll make sure that we share those resources with you. Um, also, um, Black Women's Wealth Alliance has also said that if you are work with Black Women's Wealth Alliance and you need to um, need some assistance with applications, um, they, they will be willing to assist. And we'll also make sure that we share any other resources for that type of support. And again, that ORF support at nexuscp.org. We um, monitor those emails and we're getting a lot, but we will um, get back to you on that. Um, I was in the chat, so I can't, I didn't hear everything you said, <laughs> but just, um, you may have said some of it, but like the, the libraries are also spaces where you can go use a computer or Wi-Fi. Um, there was another thing about support I wanted to mention. It'll come back. I'll say it when it comes back to me. Oh, the application party idea as well. Um, if you guys want to get together as a community or as a group and host a session for people to do it together, you guys are also able to fill out the application together. It doesn't have to be secretive <laughs> um, or anything like that. So if you just want to host something in your neighborhood or find a community space to do it at, you guys can do that as well. Yeah, it's not like filling out the SAT or whatever the standardized test is for this for this day and time. Um, I saw somebody asked if they have already submitted their application. Can we reopen that? Um, no, we can't. We get way too many. We get way too many applications to be able to do that. But what I can say is that if you if you make like spelling, grammar, other kinds of typos and stuff like that, don't sweat that. Um, if there's additional information that you want to you wanted to include, but you already answered the questions in full, 
um that's okay we're not gonna we're not gonna um we're not gonna hold anything against you in terms of like leaving stuff out so long as you answer the three main um questions of the application and we have enough information to know about what you want to do how it's going to improve your life and how it's going to empower you to take action on your wealth building plan you're good um i think the what's important for us is not like giving people penalties for um not being professional grant writers the important thing is that we know who you are that you're a real person that you're actually eligible for this fund and that you want to do something to change your life or the lives of people around you um that's what's important to us and um i would also there was a question oh Lavasha, go ahead it's just kind of piggybacking on what you guys were saying just in addition to that um, we are working on getting more supports for awardees so i've seen that in the chat as well so once they get the award, people are asking like what other supports. So we are working on partnering with people in the community that can provide help with things like maybe business planning or maybe they need more financial um, planning. And so we're partnering with other organizations that can provide that service to you all. Um, we don't have the capacity right now to do that, but we are looking into spaces that can provide that as well as other um, community education um, and things like that. There was a request to see um, where the PDF of the applications are on the website. Um, okay. And then mm -hmm. I saw another like follow up question or maybe even just a comment about the taxes. Um, so with the 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 question around um, the taxes is um, our evaluation that we are engaging in around the taxes is that. Um, as a 501c3 organization doing charitable gifts, gifts um, there is a certain um, uh, possibility that we can give the gifts as disinterested and detached gifts. And if that's the case, then they would not be um, income tax necessarily. And so that's why the evaluation and that's why we don't have kind of a more black and white answer for you today is we're still working on that evaluation. But again, we'll advise anyone that has questions or concerns to work with a tax preparer. Cool. All right, so to find the PDF of the application questions, just the questions, again, if you come to our website, um, next to cp.org, also if you just land on our main page, if you go to our work, you'll see open road fund right there. It's gonna bring you right to this page. You'll see our logo right here. So you know you're in the right spot. And then if you read down a little bit, you'll see this link. It says, download the application questions here for reference. You click on that and boom, you're in the PDF. So you can print these out. You can also save them as a PDF to your computer. And then you can review all of the same questions in the application here. Um, Duaba, can you clarify? There was I, also just a question around the timeline. Oh, yeah. Okay, so timeline question. So um, the application is going to be open from, or we opened on Juneteenth, is going to close on July 28th. We are going to take 40 days to review all of the applications that have been submitted and select awardees. We plan to have picked out the 100 awardees for this first cycle of the Open Road Fund by um, September 11th. And then we will give people um, a period of 40 days to verify their identity um, and submit their wealth building plan. And during that time, we'll also provide feedback um, on people's plans as we're able and as is needed. And once the feedback is uh, accepted, um, that person will be ready to receive an award. And then we'll start to start the process of um, our final round of gift giving. We call it peer allocation. So for people who choose to um, gift a portion of their award to other folks, 
um, who have received who have received an award, whose projects they want to support, um, you'll be invited to do that. Once that's complete, we'll make all the distributions and cut the checks. Oh, there's a good question. Um, Lisa Kelly asked, let's say you are randomly chosen through the algorithm. Is it possible that you can still be denied because of what your plan to use the money is? Um, I would say, I want to say no, because if you basically if you if you're choosing if you're writing about doing something that's not eligible and I can't really fathom I can't I can't think of what what wouldn't be eligible besides something that harms yourself or others um we are going to give you the we're going to give you feedback that you need to bring your plan into alignment with the values and the purposes of of the fund so basically there's there's no way that you could fail out on that part unless you just like I don't want to do I don't want to accept the recommendations or da, da 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 da. So you can choose to not participate basically. That's that's the way that I would say it would it would go down. Um hopefully that answers the question. We got like 5 more minutes, right? That's enough for like at least at least five questions. There's a question about running the program for eight years, meaning there's an annual opportunity to apply. Yes, with the caveat, if you get the grant, if you get the, if you get an award in a previous year, you can't apply anymore, or you can apply, but we're just not gonna, we already know we made an award to you, so we're not gonna give you a second. So you can apply as much as you want, but you can only be awarded once, and you can apply for the full eight years that the fund is open. And also, if y'all do some really good organizing and you get that Beyonce money, that Riri money, that Megan Thee Stallion money into the into the open road fund, we can extend it or we can make more awards per year. So we, we leave that up to up to, to y'all good people to handle that. Will names of awardees be made public? Um. I feel like we we say yeah, right? Is it was that the move that we? I decided? think it's case by case. Some people might not want people to know actually because of safety and stuff. But. Yeah, actually, what it is is um, we do it on the basis of consent. So, if you want your information, if you're okay with the information being shared, we will. If you don't want it for obvious reasons, we won't. What else we got? Um, do I, I was gonna ask if you could clarify earlier, um, because you mentioned like we're gonna be doing the background to prove uh residency, but can you just clarify that the background won't be like used against people if they do have a background, or what does that look like? Oh, you mean background, background. So we yeah. um all right, so the whole reason that this fund exists is because of systemic oppression against Black people and all other people of culture, um, poor people, queer people, um, women and femmes. So we are not going to hold, like we're not doing a background check to make sure that everybody has a clean record. We're doing a background check to make sure that you're a real person, <laughs> not, a, not a bot or um, someone who actually isn't eligible. But so we don't hold anybody's background against them um, the same way that we're not going to disqualify people for making spelling errors, grammar stuff, typos and all of that. Um, and actually, I would say that if you if your life experiences um, like having having a criminal record or whatever, um, experience an adoption, being a transracial adoptee, going through the foster care system or any other form of like public institution has been an obstacle to you being able to build wealth. Um, please tell us about that because it helps us to get to know who you are. It gives us a more full picture of what you've experienced and also what has failed to stop you and failed to hold you back too. There's a question about, for clarification, will you follow the awardees to look at um, 
progress. And we are partnering with research and evalu research and action to do our evaluation and research. So every awardee is required to participate in an in, in a evaluation survey one year after their award. And then there will also be a group of 50 awardees from year one and year two that will opt into a longitudinal study with research and action. Um, so longitudinal meaning that the, um, research and action will ask them to participate in discussions and focus groups for the duration of the whole fund. Um, but the evaluation is really to see like, hey, were you able to meet your goals? What made it so successful you, for you? What were the challenges for you? Um, has your quality of life changed? What would make Nexus's job of uh, facilitating this fund? How can we do that better? Um, what other resources were really helpful for you um, that you would want other awardees to know about? Um, it's not really to say, oh, you didn't, you, you weren't successful, so you have to give us the money back, or you used it for something different, you have to give us the money back. It's really, we want to learn how to make the fund um, as powerful and as um, useful for, for all the awardees in the future. And we also want to use a lot of these stories to help share what the impact is so that people also learn that you can give your money to people and do this work. And we wanna inspire more people to give more of their money to be able to create more black wealth in our region. I was also seeing someone ask in the chat if there's a way to gather with the collective of recipients, like the, the cohort of awardees. Um, that's something that we would love to see happen. And, you know, again, like we're we're a very small team and we've been blown away by like how much interest is um, present for this project. And so we, we also want to see more folks in community take initiative to, to do things like that. Um, so yeah, like if you if you're applying, you're awarded, and you have the energy to bring your cohort of people together, like please do. And on our side, what we can say is we're committed to um, efforts and initiatives that will also uplift um, the folks who are awarded, so that more people and community will rally behind y'all and support you. We're also working to build up resources um, to support folks who are not awarded. Um, because even though you haven't gotten an award, you still have a plan for how you're going to build wealth, and we want you to be successful as well. Um, so, you know, we are we're looking for folks who can help um, and just help to rally support for people. And if if that's something that you're interested in too, we'll have more opportunities coming up later in the year and in the years to come um, to. Uh, partner and support the Open Road Fund um, awardees and applicants. I, I know we're coming up on time. I wanted to boost this person's question real quick because they asked a few times. Mm. Uh, 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 the question is from Rich slash ED one day at a time. They say, what do we do if a one of our five partners started her application, but then would like to restart her application so we can all do it together? Oh, like somebody's already applied as an individual. It sounds like maybe someone who's applied as an individual, but then they like want to change to join a group. It sounds, it sounds like maybe they like started applying without like coordinating with the group, and then the group's like, uh, "Wait, no, 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 come back. We gotta." Like, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. Reach out. Let Let's talk about it. Reach out to us at ORF support at nexuscp dot org. Um, and we might be able to make something work. There was a question about if a group were was chosen and awarded and they wanted to use some of their funds for something outside of their project that the group all agreed to, would that be allowed? And, and so that made me also think about the, um, the option to share funds that we've created in the, in the, in the process of the grant management system? Yeah. Um, we leave it, we leave it to you all as the awardees to use your discretion and how you're going to use your funds. Um, 
one because we don't want to be in your business like that we don't like y'all everybody everybody's brilliant um like we want you to make the decisions that you think are best for you um that's part of what it means to be making this a gift and not just a grant so um yeah like i i say the main thing to consider is like is going out is spending money outside of um the planned work that you have ahead of you kind of hold you back from achieving that goal at a level of impact that you need it to be at um so basically like you know things happen we have to support one another um last minute expenses come up um but the challenge the challenge of of building wealth i would i, would, I guess is like can you stay focused on it um so that that's that's the best that I can say. If anybody else wants to hop in on that one, feel free. I don't um, have anything to add to I I know we're on time, but <laughs> youth. A lot of people have been asking about the youth portion of it. Um, so I just want to make sure that we at least highlighted that part. Mm -hmm. Um, at least 14 years of age. They have to be 14 at the time of the application that's open. So mm -hmm. they have to be 14 um, and they can apply. And if you have more than one member in your household that is eligible and they follow underneath those guidelines, they are also able to apply as well. Um, I was trying to find the question. It just says, can you explain the kid portion of it? But there's. I think I think you explained it. Like, yeah, um, the, I guess the only other thing I would say to add on to to you, Lavash, is um, if a young person is awarded or a group of young people are awarded, they may choose to receive that full $50,000 to put into their project. Um, like a young person wanting to start a business is a legit business and you need legit money to do it. Um, but if there's young people who are like, you know what, I would rather put some of this money into like a savings account so that it's safe or what have you. Um, young people, Young people and their guardians, parents, community, um, we also trust that y'all will advise them to, to make some sound financial decisions too. Um, and we may also have some, some more options in place for folks as we get deeper into the year and talk with more financial advisors. So just kind of keep eyes on our website about, um, options for youth award recipients too. Um, another question that I saw in here was, can African immigrants apply? And so, yes, if you are an African immigrant who has um, an ancestor who was enslaved in the Americas, you can apply. Let's see, is there anything else? Um, we're coming up on time, but I wanted to make sure that we pop the um emails in case people like have more questions, like for support. We can put that in the chat so people can have that access to that if they want to email us about questions. Yeah, let me type that in. Oh, I want to be me to it. Thank you all so much. And there were also a lot of questions about how they can find um, this uh, recording and it'll be on our Nexus YouTube page. And we will also send an email out to all of you. Um, but the first info session is on there already on our Nexus YouTube and this one will go up there as well. Thank you all so much for all your questions and we look forward to reading your applications and continuing to build black wealth and get more free with all of you in this region. I don't know if my, my homies wanna say goodbye as well. Peace y'all, looking forward to reading your applications. Thank you. It's been real y'all. Take care. Okay.